Welcome back. Welcome back to new episodes of On the Town. I'm your host, Tanya Cooper. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad to see you all back again. It's been a while. I know we've been on hiatus uh, due to budget cuts. Uh, okay, maybe there wasn't no budget. Okay, fine. You know, <laughs> but, you know, we had to find, you know, camera people and, um, you know, producers. It's very hard to find those people, okay? Uh, and it's actually impossible in Westchester County, but that's okay. You know, we've, we've made do what we have. And luckily for me, I found Dennis, our producer, on the side of the road, okay? He was actually thinking that he was going to the Yorktown studio. And I was like, no, it's, we've moved here to Peekskill. What is wrong with you? So luckily, I found him. We should give a great applause to somebody like Dennis, because without him, how am I going to do this show? Yes. Anyway, so... Um, I found this a great new app for my phone. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's called the Soundboard, yes, okay? Because, um, you know, I mean, it's nice to have two audience members, but it's nicer when you have this. Yeah, I can do what I want. I don't need an audience, okay? You know, so I'm loving this thing, you know? And if I get guests that come in and, you know, I need to know that they're here, okay? I, I need to know that the, the guest is here. Boom, that tells me, boom, done, you know? Um, okay, fine. Anyway, we have a great uh, show for you, but, uh, but did anybody uh, see on the news, de Blasio is actually thinking of having uh, Cardinal Dolan step in to ease tensions in Brooklyn over the unfortunate um, murder of the uh, man who was selling the cigarettes and was, you know, was put in chokehold by the police. You know, but I've got some advice for the guy. I just want to say, you know, Mayor, you know, you don't need to do all that. It's very simple. All you need to do is send out a memo to NYPD uh, that it's not okay and it's not open season on black men, okay? That would really, really, that, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I had to go there. I had to take it there. Uh, you know, another thing, you know, it's just sad that, like, who, deer and uh, bears get way more respect than a black man in this country. I'm sorry. Even they have, like, laws on how many you can kill. But anyway, um, you know, I just hope, you know, seriously, RIP to the family and everything, but I just thought, you know, why do all that when you can just send out a memo? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So um, uh, one of the supermodels, uh, I think she does Victoria's Secret. I'm not sure which she does, but she's a supermodel. I saw her picture. I can't remember her name. She apparently um, owns, like, this million uh, dollar brownstone in Manhattan, somewhere on 19th Street, and she's been renting it out for a year to a hedge fund, top of the hedge fund guy, uh, and his family. Uh, so now he's suing her, claiming that, um, you know, the place has rats in it, it's infested, and there's writing on the walls, and that, um, you know, the building's just unsafe, and it's, it's deplorable, and it's not livable. But I'm thinking, you know, I got advice for the guy, too. I mean, you shelled out a million dollars for this place, really? Move! I mean, everybody knows. Everybody. Everybody knows. Come on. Dude. Everybody knows you can find in a, a studio in Manhattan for a million bucks. I mean, really, that's it. You know? Not rocket scientists. You know? Plus, I mean, I think that the rats you're talking about are probably your freaking rug rats. Yeah, they'll probably mess up the walls. Baby kids, that's what you got, okay? It doesn't matter if you're the head of a hedge fund. Uh, anyway, so uh, we have a great show for you tonight, and we have a comedian guest here, Meredith Kramer. Hi, Meredith. How are you? Hi, Tanya. I'm fine, thanks. How welcome are you? to the show. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank yes. you. Thank yes. you, everybody, for having me. <laughs> so, um, Comedy. Comedy has been a very big thing lately. Uh, yes. Everybody wants to be one. Yes. Um, how did you get into comedy? Um, I've been doing stand-up comedy for about a year, mm -hmm. and um, I've always been the funny one. Mm -hmm. I've always been the most sarcastic. I'm my father's daughter. <laughs> I've always been the quick one. I've always been ready to go. Mm -hmm. People will tell me, you know, don't worry. They'll say to another friend, don't worry if you miss a joke. There'll be another one along shortly. <laughs> so I've always just been, you know 
loud and annoying and obnoxious. And I thought, well, what better way to channel all of that than into stand-up comedy? So I got um, a flyer in the mail mm -hmm. from a yoga studio, mm -hmm. in, which is a Jesuit um, monastery in the Berkshires. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my gosh, this speaks to me. Let me go take this workshop. So mm -hmm. I took a workshop with a famous comedian, mm -hmm. um, Beth Lapidus. Oh, and, Beth Lapidus. Um, yeah, I know her. You know, everybody knows who that is. Go ahead. She apparently was on Sex and the City, which okay. is amazing. Mm -hmm. And we did this like intensive workshop, and I came back, and I was ready to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. And I went onto the computer, and I looked at mics, and I started. And it's been an amazing journey. It's been so much fun. Awesome. And um, what do you think about everybody wanting to be in the comedy world now all of a sudden? I think that it's definitely a question of um, too many cooks in the kitchen. Mm. I think the problem is is that everybody thinks that they are funny. Mm. And I think that that's a really, that's a big burden, you know? There are some people <laughs> that just aren't funny. <laughs> yes. Like, absolutely. I know that um, my ex's uh, mother used to say he couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. Mm -hmm. You can sing until the cows come home, but it don't make you an opera star. Oh, so a little bit of tough love, but I think that everybody thinks they're funny and some people are not. So you can go from funny to funnier, mm -hmm. but you got it or you don't. Okay. So I think that if you're good at it and you get some good feedback, mm -hmm. have at it. Right. But not everybody's going to be famous. Right. Well, what do you think about, um, there's a lot of comedians um, uh, who said that when they first started that they were horrible. People told them they'll never do it. Um, and I think even Jerry Seinfeld, I think he said he bombed for a while. Right. Um, and then now look at them. So what do you think? I think it's a question of being in the right place at the right time, and I think it's about Absolutely. finding your voice. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, some everybody's different, and I think that you have to find your own niche. Mm -hmm. You can't be another Seinfeld. You can't be another Carrot Top. You have to be you. Right. right. And I think that in different rooms, mm -hmm. there's a different type of audience that wants a different thing. So I think that if you do want to do it, Go do open mics. Go to that dive bar in the sketchy neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Go take a workshop. Do something to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But like Kenny Rogers says, you got to know when to fold them. Fold <laughs> so I think that there's, it's just, it's about balance, striking that balance between knowing that you can give this a go mm -hmm. and knowing when to throw in the, the towel. Mm, that makes sense. And what do you think about uh, women in comedy? Right now, that's a big, uh, I see a lot more women than I used to. Yeah. Even though it's still not nearly half of, as it is the men. I definitely think it's still a boys club. I mean, I think that's, that's a big problem. I think that a lot of people will say that women aren't as funny mm -hmm. or they're stuck doing certain jokes. Mm -hmm. And I think that we really need to look backwards to our, our idols and the groundbreakers like the Phyllis Dillises mm -hmm. and or Phyllis Burnett. Dillers, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the Roseanne Bars mm -hmm. and Ellen's and things like that. Mm -hmm. And look at those three women mm -hmm. and know that this is not only possible, it's achievable right. and it's very realistic mm -hmm. if you find your audience. Mm -hmm. And I think that you look at those people and somebody like a Roseanne might mm -hmm. be more crude mm -hmm. and Ellen wants to be everybody's friend right. and they're very polarizing. Some people like one, some people like the other. Mm -hmm. And it's just tapping into what you think is more universally funny. I think women are hilarious. Yes, absolutely. But one caveat, I think that a woman comedian has to be a comedian. And a woman comedian shouldn't try to hang with the boys. Mm -hmm. I think she should strike out her own turf and do her own thing. You think so? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, uh, some of my favorites were uh, Gilda Radner. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, God bless her soul. Yes. And uh, Carol Burnett. Absolutely, That's yes. Absolutely, absolutely my favorite. I love Phyllis Diller. I never, I never saw her stand up, but just anything else I saw her doing, right. I loved her. Um, and uh, I like the old Saturday Night Live um, yes. model mm -hmm. rather than the new stuff. Um, uh, that's coming out, like old slapstick comedy. Right. You know, Jerry Lewis. Right. Um, Dean uh, Martin. Martin, yeah. Um, that, I'm more of the old slapstick, you know. Do you, okay. Do you, um, do you see a difference in today's comedians versus the older school ones in how they approach their humor? Absolutely. I think that with the advent of all this technology, mm -hmm. with Twitter and Instagram and even Facebook, mm -hmm. everything is, is very, very now. Mm -hmm. And we are taking pictures of our food instead of eating our food. <laughs> So I, I think the comedian, it's, it's a little strange, it's a little hard to take, but I think the comedians now, mm -hmm. the women especially, are trying to be edgy on purpose. Right. And I think that they're abandoning who they really are, right. yeah. rather than trying to talk about, you know, some of them talk about housework, or they talk right. about raising kids. Right. Like writing, you gotta write what you know. Right, truth. And I think you have to own that. Mm -hmm. And I think that if a woman can pull off an adult joke about pleasuring herself or something like that, that's fine, but don't fake that. Right. You have to be you because if you're faking it, 
nobody's going to find you funny and you ain't going anywhere. Right. So I think the men have more freedom, mm -hmm. perhaps, mm -hmm. and the women really have to work a little bit harder right. to find that audience. Yeah, I think they do. Uh, but I, I find I, I was going around to different places to see what women are saying. Yeah. And I find like a lot of the open mics, I hear girls um, purposely talking about sex, like so yes. they can immediately catch that guy, especially the young audience. Yes. And it, it's yes. so it's so like it really so pisses me off and makes yeah. me think like, oh, can you think of something else? I mean, if it's if that's you. Then that's fine. Like if a stripper was a comic turned to kind of turned comic and she was talking about sexual jokes, that would make sense <laughs> and it would be hysterical, right? Because yes, that's that, what yes. she does. That's yes. all she does. Exactly. But you know, um, for you to take advantage of your boobs, like I am right now, um, <laughs> no, I'm totally joking. <laughs> uh, to take advantage of your um, your womanness, I don't know. I think unless it's something you do in your profession, I think it's kind of whack. But, I couldn't uh, agree more. That's like I me. said, you have to be you, and if you're crude by nature, then that's fine. Right. But you have to understand certain things resonate with everybody mm -hmm. and certain things are so focused mm -hmm. that not everybody's going to find them funny. Absolutely. And I don't know that you should, you can hang with the boys and mm -hmm. I don't think you should want to. Right. I think you should, again, like the Roseanne or, you know, even Rosie O'Donnell mm -hmm. or anybody, they have their own, Evan and Ellen has their own brand of comedy. Mm -hmm. they sure it do. doesn't necessarily matter that they're female, they're just funny. Right, right. Absolutely. So I think you have to compete against you. Absolutely. And you have to do you. Everyone else is taken. Absolutely. But do you ever feel like um, when you're at open mics or anything that sometimes uh, women kind of get pushed to the back? Sometimes um, I feel that. I, I, I mean, the ones I've been going to here in Westchester, I feel the love, no problem. Right. But, but that I have observed some where I'm like, hmm. Right. Hmm. Women, are not, if they're not assertive and... Uh, go-getters, right. they could easily be pushed to the side just a little bit. Okay. You know, so. I think that if you're a comedian, mm -hmm. you have to get over that. Right. Um, I know that most of the mics that I've done, it's primarily men, mm -hmm. and there aren't very many females. Right. So the ones that are there really have to plant their flag and say, I'm here. Right. I think that you can be a little bit edgy right. and still be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I get pushed to the side so much because mm -hmm. I am so big. I have such a big personality. You do. You do. But I think that there are people that are out there that are sort of, I'm not sure I'm funny. This is going to be awful. And if that's a female thing, is apologizing for everything. No. Right. Even if you are dead wrong and nobody laughs at anything, mm -hmm. you got to own that and be you. Mm -hmm. So I think that we as females need to push each other and help each other and say, look, get get out there. Yeah. Take more workshops, log more stage time, do right. stuff. Right. So rather than knock each other down and push, like you said, get pushed out of the way. Right. Uh, are we actually being pranked? Do I actually hear a phone in the background? <laughs> are we being pranked? I think. I'm wondering being, if what's his name? I'm waiting for Ashton Kutcher to come out and tell me I don't out. hear a machine or someone on the phone. In the oh, back. you're worried about Ashton really? Kutcher. I'm worried yeah. about Candid Camera. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm dating myself a little bit. Um, <laughs> what about... Um, uh, have you seen um, Unfortunate News, R.I.P. to uh, Robin Williams' family, you know? Do you yes, about that? I did see that. I, I, was, uh, I was at an open mic last night, as a matter of fact, and my mom pushed her phone across the table, mm -hmm. her flip phone from 1980-whatever, <laughs> and, uh, and she showed me that my sister had texted her. Mm. And then we all got out our smartphones, and mm -hmm. we looked it up, and I, we were just pretty well horrified. I mean, it, it was such a shock. Yes. <clears throat> I mean, Even now, you get a little yeah, emotional. Yeah, um, Patch Adams. I mean, all the movies that he did, just amazing. But everything, I mean, everything from the 70s, you know, Mork, yes, you know, Nanu Nanu, 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 Nanu Make Peace, and, yes. and everything, mm -hmm. Mrs. Doubtfire, and yeah. all of the things that we sort of grew up with, yes. the, you know, um, the, I don't what is Dead Poet Society? Yes. The, the movie that he did, and yeah. just, and, and I'm a big Law & Order fan, and one of the people texted, or tweeted, excuse me, about how his character, he was only on one episode, he was like the only criminal that totally fooled the cops and got away with murder. Oh, wow. And really, and just what a, a, a renaissance man that he really was able to do so many different things. Mm. But obviously he had demons mm -hmm. and, and struggled for yeah. years. Yeah, he had mentioned it. I, I, I've heard him mention stuff in his set. One, maybe I think it was one time I heard something and I was surprised. But right. uh, I really thought he would like overcome it somehow right you know but uh, apparently not uh, well you look at you know and I don't know too much but Phil Philip Seymour Hoffman yes, you know similar issue and yes. you it's unfortunate but you're not in someone else's skin you're not on their journey you have no idea what they're going through absolutely and how they handle things absolutely um, you think you hope that they're okay and that they get the help that they need but I, I guess it's insurmountable and they just they couldn't lick the problem yeah well that's one of the reasons why I love comedy so much because um, you know, as much pain as somebody may be going in the real world, right. if, if you really get into comedy, 
there's so many people out there that can make you laugh. Yes. And, and, and yes. at least get through for the day of whatever pain you're going through. Right. So Robin uh, Williams was that type of person. Yes. I, I thought he was put on this earth to help people through pain, and maybe he didn't know that, but right. I don't know. It's just, um, it was very shocking. Very shocking. Um, so RIP to Robin Williams and his family. Um, and we lost a great, a great true comic. I mean, yes. he was my, one of my idols, one of the people I had on my uh, my to do list to meet. Yes, you know? yes. But that won't happen. And um, you know, I'm sure he's up there somewhere making somebody else laugh. <laughs> you know, so. One, one would hope, <laughs> yes, that he uh, he can finally find. Well, that's it. Finally find some peace. Yeah. Maybe and 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 having escaped closure. some of these demons that mm -hmm. he couldn't deal with mm -hmm. on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So on a different note, um, who are some of your favorite comedians? <laughs> Here's the part where I, I embarrass myself. Um, I think one of my favorite comedians actually is Gallagher. Um, Gallagher. I haven't seen him in forever, you know, with the watermelons, yes, smashing okay. the watermelons. Mm -hmm. Because I love puns and I love witticisms and, you know, I, I'm a teacher in real life, so oh. it's playing with language. Mm -hmm. You know, he did this one bit, and I thought it was hilarious, where he took out, you know, a deck of playing cards. Mm -hmm. And we all say, we've all seen the I Love New York, right? And there's, you know, the I Heart New York app. And the, or the bumper sticker or the T-shirts or whatever. So then he takes out um, the, club, the spade, and he says, I spade my dog, you know? And then he says, which I just, I think is so funny and so clever, but it's so every day. Right. You know, it, it's nothing that nobody will understand. There's so many comics out there that, like art, like I just don't get it. Right. You know, and then he did one that was a little off color, and he took out the, the club, mm -hmm. and he says, I club my dog. <laughs> you know, and it's, I mean, it's funny, but it's not. You know, it, but it's that thing of playing with things. Mm -hmm. And I love watching Whose Line Is It Anyway. Oh, that's a great, great Because, show. you know, you can see the camaraderie, and you can see the comedians ribbing each other. And, you know, if anybody's unfamiliar with it, it's sort of like that contestant-type show with fake points and all that. Mm -hmm. But the great part is that even between... Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times they get up, they do their thing. Mm -hmm. And I remember on another note, I went to see the taping of one of the shows, like Ricky Lake or something. And, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as you go to a commercial, they're off camera. Right. They don't care about you. They don't even know you're there. Right. And right. everything is phony and everything is fake. Mm -hmm. I think with the Who's line, mm -hmm. even in between the little sketches, mm -hmm. you can see them kind of poking fun at each other and ribbing each other. And you can tell they, they're in sync. Mm -hmm. They've worked together a long time and they know what they're doing. Right. And I, I love, you know, the prop game where they have to make things out of nothing and that sort of thing. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, um, I'm trying to think, uh, what was the first joke that you ever told? Do you remember? Oh, the gosh. Tired, right? The first joke I ever told. Um, think long and hard. Think long and hard. <laughs> first I, that, joke. That, that, there's a joke in there somewhere. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I can tell you a joke that I wrote when okay. I was uh, in, in elementary or middle school. Go ahead. Um, what do you call a buffalo sleepover? A buffalo sleepover. I don't know. What do you call A bison tent deal. <laughs> I think that's good. <laughs> oh, thank you, Thank you. Applause. Thank you. <laughs> I love just playing with words and puns and just using language because English is so fluid. Right. You know, you can say the most broken, fakakta the sentence, and somebody will understand you, and right. you'll, they'll get it. Right. So just, it's playing right. to me. Right. Now, did you major, what did you major in to become a teacher? Um, my undergraduate degree is Spanish literature and oh. French. Oh, really? Yeah. You français. Pa oui, je parle really? français. Okay. And uh, my graduate degree is Spanish and education, so I'm a middle school Spanish teacher. Oh, wow. Yes, I just got a job, oh, thank amazing. goodness. And she deserves an applause for that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, Thank come you. on, you're teachers, right? Teachers are the, the, the best yes. Yes. to our yes. society. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Um, so I wanted to um, hear something you have for us. Would you do um, like maybe five minutes for us? Sure, why okay. not? Awesome, yes, we do want to hear that for sure. Okay. Um, Thank so you. we're going to uh, hope that uh, we can hear Meredith now, and uh, she's going to do five minutes for us. That'll work? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Mm -hmm. So I came here to talk about housework and how much I loves me some housework. Not. Does anybody like housework? <laughs> no. No. Crickets, crickets, crickets. <laughs> no, no. I hate no. housework. But not for the reason that you may think. Mm -hmm. I hate housework because I always end up injuring myself when I do housework. <laughs> true, true story. <laughs> So when I was younger, growing up at my parents' house, we had this vacuum. 
and it had features and benefits and all this cool stuff. Well, at least I thought it was cool. It had this cord where if you yank on it, it retracts. And it, like the cord hides inside the machine, right? So it doesn't get tangled on anything. I am probably the only person you will ever meet in your entire life in the 129 year Electrolux history to bruise myself on the vacuum. <laughs> I can't. I just, you know, and another thing I can't stand is doing dishes. First of all, because it just it never ends, right? But we have this hardware on the front of the sink, and it's like these little pokey things, and it's right at belly height, you know, so I'm always like poking myself and, and that sort of thing. And the sink is always wet, you know, because you're always doing dishes. So it gets wet right in this area, right in the middle here. And it looks like I peed myself in an anti-gravity chamber because there's water everywhere. Um, but back to the vacuuming for a second, I found a workaround, which I thought was fantastic. When I was younger, again, growing up at my parents' house, I had two pets. I had a parakeet, which was amazing. She would come when called and, and all that stuff. And I had a rabbit. And the parakeet would like dig and 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 get into her seeds, you know, and, and eat the seeds and scatter them everywhere. Mm -hmm. So what did I do in my infinite wisdom? I let the rabbit out of his cage <laughs> and he would come around and he would eat the seeds. Mm. Everybody wins. I don't have to vacuum. My mom stops nagging me. And the rabbit's fed. <laughs> Sounds like a win-win to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, anyway, um, I've also thought a lot lately about people who use things not for their intended purposes. I'll give you an example. My mom has an e-reader, right? The Kindle. The name, re the word reading is in the title. It's an e-reader. What does she use? The e-reader for? <laughs> Playing games. She plays a crossword game and she plays games on it. I'm just wondering, this blows my mind. I'm like, you spend all this money on an e-reader to play games. What do I use my e-reader for? Oh, I read about books. <laughs> so I was too cheap to spend the extra 20 bucks and uh, get the one without advertising. So what I did was, you know, every time I turn it on, rather, there's an advertisement for a book. So I said, oh, that looks good. And then, you know, you read the description, and you read the reviews, and then you download it or you don't, whatever. Oh my God, shopping wirelessly, I'm going to blow my fortune. But I read about a book and then it's like, oh, if you like this book, you'll like that book. So I read about that book too. And then I read about the third book and then this and that, the other. And all of a sudden, it's 20 minutes later and I haven't done any reading. I've been reading about books. Um, yeah. Also cars. I don't think people use cars for their intended purposes. A car to me is a conveyance, a way to get from point A to point B. Have you seen what people do in their cars lately? I saw a guy braiding his beard. <laughs> so he's driving, he's got his knee on the steering wheel, and he's <laughs> like this, and he's got a phone in his ear, and he's braiding his beard. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's oh, doing that bro stash Movember thing, like a contest, whatever. You know, we've all seen women doing their makeup and, you know, brushing and talking on the phone and things like that. What I do in the car is I eat because I'm always in motion. I do a lot of things. I got my hand in a lot of pots, right? <laughs> so I'm always having a snack of some kind. Where do I get my snacks? The diner. Whenever I go out to eat at a diner, people always get real embarrassed. They don't want to go with me because I steal everything that's wrapped. <laughs> you know, they put out the bread basket and the bread basket has breadsticks and it has, you know, saltines and all kinds of crackers and stuff like that. And I just whoosh right into my bag. So I keep them in the console and I, I eat when I'm driving. Um, one thing that bugs me about driving is, I don't know if anybody's seen those driver's ed videos, Mr. Walker and Mr. Wheeler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those of you that have it, it's like a goofy type character, you know, the big dog. And Mr. Wheeler is a jerk. He gets, it's like Jekyll and Hyde, and he gets behind the wheel and he's like, Arr! you know, and he's driving like on the sidewalk and he's mowing people down and he's driving really fast. So when I get behind the wheel, I too am Mr. Wheeler. Because in my neighborhood, people don't jaywalk. They like Q-walk. You know, they don't walk diagonal across the street. They don't walk straight across the street. They walk as, as facocked away as possible. Which drives me crazy because I live in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. And, you know, in the middle of the street, they'll walk across the street, whether they have the light or they don't. Walk halfway across the street, stop on the double yellow line. Right in the middle of the street, there's a berth. <laughs> There's a wedding. 
There's that quinceanera, you know, that sweet 16 type party. And then they zip across the street. And it's not just one person. It's like a gaggle. It's like geese. There's like a woman, and she's holding a hand of a kid who's holding a hand of another kid who's holding a hand of another kid. And then there's grandma 10 feet behind. So you're like, you know, trying to stop. But then when I get out of the car and I'm Mr. Walker, I'm really concerned about, oh, I don't know, not getting run over by Mr. Wheeler. <laughs> So I'm doing my thing, I'm trying to walk, and you know what, if I see a car coming, I'm gonna move it, and I'm gonna do that fake jog thing across the street, so you at least think that I'm trying to respect you. You know, that sort of thing. Um, I also, I'll leave you with this, I also do a lot of driving, quote unquote, upstate, on the goat trail, also known as Route 6. <laughs> on one side you got a cliff, you know, you got the rocks rather, on the other side you got a cliff, and there's invariably, and it's one lane in the direction, invariably there is a truck behind me. Not some rinky-dink little box truck U-Haul thing. Oh, no. It's like an 18-wheeler serious truck. And they can't get around you because, as I mentioned, it's one lane in either direction. So they start moving laterally. So what I do is I become that person, and I do Morse code with my taillights. So it's get off my tail. So the moral of the story is when you are driving, watch out for pedestrians. And when you are a pedestrian, move your butt. Thank you. That's my time. <laughs> Meredith Kramer, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Meredith. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank so, you. Um, so we can find you at any open mic, the Bean Runner, Peace Kill, Molly Spillings, uh, Copper Face Jacks, yep. the Back Air Pub. Um, uh, that's right. I failed to mention you had... Actually, a paid gig before at Mimo's Tapa Sports in New York. Yes. yes. Okay. Yay for paid so, gigs. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> we thank you so much for being our guest, right? Yes. Thank we you. We want to thank you me. very much. And um, and so basically, uh, anybody um, anybody who wants to be a guest on our show, um, you know, you can email me at tgirlcooper at yahoo.com, Okay. Just understand that you know. No fancy snancy services here, you know. We keep it 100%, okay? <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's no teleprompter, you know, no reading of your notes like me, or you may see that. You never know what you're going to get. But at any rate, you're going to get something because you'll be on the town with Tanya. Yes, I would like to thank uh, my producer, Dennis. Yes, can I get a clap for that? Really? Right. Uh-huh. And um, I'd like to thank Meredith Kramer for coming to the show. And um, until next time, people, please, uh, you know, stay watching and make sure you watch On the Town Sundays on Channel 74, 54 in some areas. And thank you very much. You, uh, we'll see you next time. Sunshine, they bring some rain. They bring some sunshine, they bring some rain. They bring some sunshine.